Okay, then I like to introduce the first speaker. This is Thilo Schumann from CIA, and he will uh, give you the introduction into the J9039 protocol so that uh, you have a better understanding on the following presentations. Please, Thilo, take the floor. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Marcel, an electrical engineer, and I'm working uh, with Canon Automation for more than 30 years right now. I, over the years, like uh, uh, Holger Seifwanger uh, himself, I'm also a part of different standardization groups and uh, just lately uh, specialized in, in, in functional safety, uh, lately, for the last 20 years or so. Uh, and uh, security. Yeah, I want to give you a short introduction uh, into J1939 for the next uh, yeah half an hour. Uh, as Mr. Feldlanger already um, said, um, there was a need uh, for the besides the uh, automotive industry like cars. Uh, in the truck industry, they were also in need to introduce um, communication systems earlier. And uh, it looked like CAN was very suitable at the beginning. And so they were looking ar around this. And um, so the, the SIE basically developed uh, the J1939 standards with different requests with different uh, things on the to-do list with different main features which are required and, and to be used. Uh, one of them is, of course, uh, the 10 data link layer should be used, um, especially with the 29-bit identifier. Then we have different uh, communication requirements like peer-to-peer -peer communication and broadcast communication. That's the one which uh, can or offers by default, but on top of that, we need a peer-to-peer -peer communication. We need maybe some transport protocols because we want to transmit a large amount of data. And of course, we need network management. We need to identify devices, ECUs, uh, if they are available, if they have faults, if they are able to communicate, all those different things we need in, which we need in, in general management. And of course, we have a dedicated application, which is originally uh, trucks and buses. But um, yeah, as we have seen already uh, in the short introduction, it is also used these days in many, many other industries which uh, facilitate uh, diesel engines, like uh, in marine ships, like in generators and, and other, and off-road vehicles in other industries. Uh, Mr. Sedra showed already the reference model, which is behind the J1939 uh, specifications. Originally, the reference model, of course, is the ISO, uh, the OC reference model, the Open System Interconnect, which models the communication in different layers because all of those different layers have different yeah, requirements, different things, functions which they uh, implement. We have the physical layer, which uh, yeah manage, I would say, the, the physical connection. We have the data link layer, which is obviously can. And we have all other requirements on network layer, transport layer to the application layer. And so J1979 is not a single standard. It's a bunch of standards. Uh, with many different parts, and each of those parts take care of all those different uh, layers of the OC reference model. So we have the J1939 Hamish standards, uh, which are all related to the physical connection. We have the Twenish standards, which uh, deal with the data link layer, which is 21 original CAN and 22 CAN FD. We have the 30-ish uh, standards where, where we have uh, many, yeah, just one, the 31, which deals with uh, definitions of the network layer. And we have different 70-ish 
uh, standards which deal with the different application requirements. As we can see here, for vehicle applications, for diagnostics, for configuration, and, and alike. And we have a general network management definition, which is a part uh, 81, which, yeah, 80 is not a part of the different uh, of the OC here. And uh, of course, there are also another number of, of specification which deal with all the different parts and, and the different uh, requirements we, we have in the different areas. Um, I will go a little bit from the bottom up to the top. Uh, on the bottom layer, I, I said we have the tennis standard to define the different physical layers. One of the most common physical layer for truck and buses originally in part 11 uh, is using the so-called high-speed pen physical layer. It uh, defines the, the connected pipes, like uh, it should be a sweeping, unshielded connected. Um, it is not for tolerant. It defines the number of nodes in a segment. And so it, it really goes into the details on defining all the physical interconnection and the physical requirements in the network. We have something comparable, which is the uh, CON AG uh, uh, <coughs> physical network. And uh, which requires, uh, yeah, which does uh, um, other requirements. And, and we have seen there were also other uh, specifications on this one. To go into the details, um, uh, on the topology, as I said, um, 11, part 11 defines uh, very detailed the physical side of the network. So we have a maximum certain nodes, we have unshielded cable. Um, the <coughs> Uh, maximum unshielded cable in the trunk line of, of six inches defined. We have the maximum trunk line defined. And we have also the length of the different drop lines defined. So everything of the network, including termination and all the things, is clearly defined so that we may have something like a plug and play network that we can assure that our devices, which we connect to the network, if we follow these rules, these guidelines, this uh, specification, then it is make sure that all uh, the requirements are, are fulfilled and that we are able to communicate at all. Then I said, we, um, we have the 20-ish uh, uh, standard, standards, which is for 21, which defines basically that we use uh, classical CAN. And uh, just recently, a few years ago, uh, yeah, just can't remember the dates right now, but uh, just recently, we have the 22 specification, which uh, makes the uh, definitions on, on using CAN FD. If you go to our original definition, uh, definition uh, of 21, which is classical CAN, we see uh, we, we make use of the 29 bit identifier. So if we look at our CAN message, uh, our classical CAN message, uh, we see we have uh, our 29 bit identifier, which is the 11 bit base identifier and the 18, uh, 18 bit uh, extended. Identifier and then the data link layer specification may uh, not only says or specifies that we use uh, CAN with the 29 bit identifiers, they clearly define also on, on how to uh, <coughs> make use of these identifiers. Um, we have the definition that we can use peer to peer communication. We can have the definition to uh, make a podcast communication. 
and the identifier basically then and yeah the bits of the identifier basically defined on on how we use it uh, for what purpose so for example for example part of the 18 bit bit identifier extension we have the source address so we have the address of the node which is transmitting the data and part of the uh, PDU format and then the PDU specific information we uh, it is defined do we make a broadcast message do we address is, is there a destination address like in a peer to peer communication or or am I <laughs> So here, just for example, we have the one-to-many uh, communication. Um, like uh, again, we have we, we mainly see here the the definition of the twenty-nine bit identifier, and we see that we have identified. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, we are we are just transmitting the data, and then it's. It is either who to, uh, um, to whom it may concern. So uh, we don't address specific devices, but basically the data by itself is addressed, or we specifically can uh, make a specific broadcast so that the uh, message is, is transmitted basically to everyone. Um, we can request data. There is a specific request message. Um, so <clears throat> It is identified as a request message as part of the identifier. And then, of course, we have the request message either requesting data from a specific device. So we address a certain ECU, or we can either also make a, a global request. So we have different possibilities on transmitting messages. I don't go in, into the details of all the um, types of messages. Uh, but uh, I just want to add to that, of course, we have also the possibility um, to transmit a huge amount of data, or well, larger amount of data by use of um, a transport protocol. The transport protocol is a classical connection-oriented point-to-point -point communication, but is also available as a connectionless broadcast uh, communication. And almost 1800 bytes can be sent with that. Of course, we have also additional requirements. So, uh, in, in the definition here, and that is very important in designing uh, ECUs, is our ECU must, must be able to handle 100% bus load because it, it can always happen that for a certain amount of time and can 100% bus load occurs. So our software, our hardware design, our software design must be able to, to handle those situations so that we cannot lose any data. <clears throat> and we have in the specification also timing requirements, um, when messages should be sent, when uh, our timeouts, when uh, should be the minimum uh, amount of data which can be sent. So we have lots of uh, very, Specific information in, in, in the uh, 20-ish specification. That was for classical CAN. Of course, we have we are going to to having the same for CAN 39, which uh, is based uh, on on CAN FD. So for the 22 specification, um, they are the same transport services modified for the use of CAN FD. So we again have our point-to-point -point oriented connection uh, with up to eight concurrent sessions. And now uh, not uh, anymore with just 18, uh, almost 1800 bytes. Now we can uh, transmit almost um, 16, uh, 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 six, yeah, 16 megabytes. Of course, a connectionless broadcast still is, is available and that uh, is now, um, offering the possibility to transmit up to 15 kilobytes with up to four concurrent sessions. Just to give you a, a short glimpse on that, um, as I said, the transport protocol, um, the connection-oriented transport protocol is basically a confirmed protocol. So we have a request to, to send, a clear to send, and all these mechanisms 
which allow us to control the transmission. And um, we see here that in the specification, it is also clearly defined the timings around this so that it is possible to make plug and play system. And that's of course the thing, if I design an ECU, it must work uh, together with other ECUs. And so we need not only to define the protocols uh, and, and the data to be used, but also timing requirements, because that eases um, the system integration for the system integrator that devices, ECUs basically can uh, communicate to each other and not one ECU is, is having a timeout while the other still wasn't able to, to transmit this message for whatever reason. But that we are talking at the same speed with the same requirements and all those different things. With the, um, just a short example on the connectionless um, broadcast message. Uh, again, here it's a uh, we, we can, uh, can transmit. Uh, a number of data in, in different segments and it is unconfirmed. So we yeah, basically have to hope that everybody has received the, the data and the segments are numbered. And because of the uh, numbered segments, we are limited in the size, which is um, 1800 bytes uh, with classical can <laughs> and up to 16 megabytes, uh, up to uh, 15 kilobytes with um, NFT. But, yeah, J1939 is not commonly known for those definitions of the lower layers because um, that is what everybody seems to be the soul. That's something we don't talk about. That's something we don't care about, uh, about because that is resolved. And the reason why it's resolved is it is clearly specified. The other side, um, the application there, the 70 specification, that makes the definitions of the data. Here we can find the clear data definition. So we have a clear topic, which is truck and bus, so may, mainly diesel engine control and auxiliary devices around uh, our diesel engine, which we may require. So we know all the data which is required to transmit their data there and to control our system. And that's, for example, engine oil pressure, uh, engine oil temperature, ABS pressure, engine speed. You know, every of those little uh, um, data. And the data has to be also clearly specified in how much is the data length, um, what data types basically we use, what's the resolution, the offset, the ranges. And so that is clearly specified as parameters and each of those parameters have their um, definitions regarding them. And every of those parameters is uniquely defined there in the specification. And each of those parameters as it is designed, uh, defined uniquely has their own identification and the identification is what we are have been known as a suspect parameter number SDS here. Here again we see the complete definition of, of, of such a suspect parameter. We have the parameter definitions like again the data length resolution offset, the type, the range, and the unique number. And then <coughs> It is that all those parameters are basically grouped by their function. Of course, controlling a diesel engine is not, or a truck and bus is not only the engine control itself, but we have a driver cabin, we have um, um, brake system. So it's not only engine, we have the brake system, we have uh, additional uh, things like lightning, uh, uh, the lighting uh, around uh, the car, the truck, and so on. So we have many different functions in a truck, in a bus, in a, in an off-road vehicle, in a marine ship, uh, and any of those different applications have their own specific functions for that. And so we have, um, in general, all the parameters uniquely defined. 
but of course, according to their function or also group. And then according to the group, it is um, decided on when should those data uh, being, being transmitted. So we have an update rate and to which subsystem of course they, they are belonging to. And if we have the parameter group, um, then of course we also need to define the data lens of those groups in general, the priority in relation to other groups and so on. And we see here just an example on this. Um, yeah, that is maybe the parameter group ambient conditions. The parameter group ambient conditions is, is yeah, is composed out of different parameters like the barometric pressure, like the cabin interior temperature, the ambient air temperature, and the air in that temperature. So we have all those different unique parameters, which have their definitions like data length resolution, data range, their unique number, their SPN. And then all those parameters are grouped in, into our group, me, uh, group message, a parameter group, which is called ambient conditions. And our parameter group then has like uh, the transmission rate, which is defined as a repetition rate. Uh, it should be repeatedly transmitted every second. And um, it has this dedicated parameter group number. It's dedicated to me. And that PGN in a version then goes into the message which we see in, in JNNT circuit. Just another example here for the ambient uh, conditions. And yeah, so that, so, and, and, and J1939 is basically mainly about those higher layer definitions about this specification. And we have seen, we have, Lots of different application definitions, the 70 uh, specification, where um, not only the, the, the control situation, but also diagnostics information. We have in NMEA 2000, we have the, uh, the, the definitions for, for trip control, mar maritime trip control there. And so we have all those dedicated lists. In J1939, all the detailed specification of all those parameters and groups is basically not part of the, yeah, the paper specification. I would, I would say it's part of, of what it's called the digital annex, the big Excel sheet basically where all the data is included when I get uh, my hands on the specification. We had in the past, uh, we had also, of course, uh, the development from classical CAN to CAN FD. I said already, we have a J1939 specification 22, which makes use of CANFD and um, that all those things doesn't came out of thin air. They, they were developed over the times. It started with some of uh, different truck manufacturers within CIA. We developed our 602 specification series with them on how to uh, make use of CANFD in J1939 environments. And so the specification rules with those requirements uh, being developed. And it, it is also have been developed with uh, compatibility to, to Autosar, uh, which it was already in use. Uh, there were also a test bed being uh, made if all, the if all the things we, we specified there together with the different uh, participants really work. And it has been shown um, that we uh, have a huge uh, improvement by using CANFD over classical CAN with those definitions. <laughs> uh, the idea is basically to use the original J1939 definition, the original J1939 messages and yeah, use them as so-called contained PDUs and put them into a multi-PDU and then transmitting on CANFD the, the large amount of data, a large frame, basically uh, as a multi-PDU. As I said, that concept was developed in our uh, 602 series specification. 
and was then incorporated into the new uh, J1939-22 uh, specification. But basically, uh, yeah, we must say with, with the publishing of this specification and the release of this uh, J1939 specification, of course, our dedicated uh, CIA specification became somehow uh, obsolete because the content and definitions is basically the same. Um, we, um, again, we, we have a detailed uh, information on, on how this is being uh, resolved. We have also different uh, addressing mechanisms on, yeah, on, on one to, uh, on, yeah, on addressing the multi PG on the different devices, uh, uh, on the different ECUs, and then having the data as contained PDUs inside. We have also additional other specifications, some of uh, for uh, for the different layers of the of the ISO reference model. We have like uh, DJ twenty two eighty four dash four and dash five, um, which is used in other areas, um, but it's also yeah is defining uh, basically can FD for those uh, 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 yeah to make use of can FD. Because those specifications were a little bit earlier than, uh, uh, than because that's, that has been developed with, I would say, pressure from the automotive industry, from, let's say, the car industry. Truck development is a little bit slower than, than car development. And so within SAE, those physical definitions were already being made and then later being uh, also referenced, adopted, and like by uh, trucks and buses. And we see that uh, then in the J1939-17 uh, specification, which basically somehow uh, in, in variance makes use of those as well. We have there also detailed timing definitions. Again, the same, like we have the, cl the classical can with can of D-based communication. We want to have some kind of a plug and play behavior so that systems and alike should work. Um, just to recap uh, the number of CIA specifications we have uh, released, we, um, we work together with all the experts from the industry to develop those, to make the integration of uh, CANFD communication much more easier and to <clears throat> especially to realize higher communication speeds and to really make use of the advantages of CANFD and allow uh, in, in basically any environment, of course, the most important is our, our SIG transceiver specification, which, uh, um, which gives us the robustness of CAN, uh, uh, which we had for years with CANFD and, um, and also, uh, yeah, I would say plug and play. Yeah. And with that, I would like to end and I would think because of the short amount of of time, I, I, I had to rush a little bit about uh, or school the different topics. And I hope I, I gave you a, a short glimpse on, on what is being defined there. And of course, it cannot replace a complete uh, training course, uh, which you may uh, um, receive uh, on, on request. Um, yeah, I, I like to thank you for your time.